But many of us have made an alliance with anxiety somewhere deep in our hearts. And we have actually grown so accustomed to our anxiety that it now feels normal to us, and peace feels foreign. And so now you get used to just how waking up feeling weird all the time, and now you get used to feeling on edge all the time, and you begin to think that it is normal because it's all that you've ever seen. And I love what the elders said to Ahab. This is what I believe the Spirit of God is saying to somebody today, and it's the message God gave me. Do not listen to your enemy or agree to his demands. Just because my enemy speaks something doesn't mean I have to agree with it. After all, it is not the voice you hear that determines the life you end up with. It's the voice you believe. And before the enemy can get you to agree with it, he has to get you to believe it. So, in order to get you to believe it, he'll get somebody to say it. And how many have found out you cannot believe everything you hear? Not these days. I was reading the list of things that Paul said that we should think about because he's trying to give us a new perspective. You don't have to believe everything that crosses through your mind. You don't have to accept everything that comes across your heart. He said, uh, don't be anxious about anything, but pray about everything. Now, he says there are some things we should think about. Verse 8, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely. But see, I stopped at part one when he said, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, think about such things. Because I wondered, how do I even know anymore what that is? How do I even know what is true? How how can I possibly know in this culture of headlines and highlights? Now you don't even just believe the headline, you believe the retweet of the retweet of the retweet of the retweet. How do I even know what is true anymore? How do I even know? Because if I if I make an agreement with the enemy, that's why I was excited about youth X. I think that if we can undo some of the untruths and keep our young people from making some agreements with the enemy. No, this is what I'm praying. This is what I'm praying, not only for for this week, but I'm praying this for my kids all the time. Y'all know I've got a good prayer life because I've got three children that are still living in my house. Y'all know I got a good prayer life because one of them has his driver's permit. Y'all know I got a good prayer prayer life because I have a beautiful 10-year-old daughter, and oh, I'm praying every day. Don't let my daughter, don't let my sons, don't let me make agreements. With the enemy. Don't let me make an agreement with the enemy. You know, sometimes you get in this self pity mode and you kind of go with it and you start thinking, oh, I'm just worthless, I'm just this, I'm just that, I'm just the other. You know why you do that? Because it takes the pressure off for a minute. You know why Ahab gave up his silver and his gold and the Bible said his best wives, not. <laughs> You can have the other ones, but Lord, let me keep the best ones. I'm going to take your silver and your gold, and I'm going to take your best wives and your best kids. In other words, I'm going to tax the land. Ahab said, okay, because if I agree with you, maybe you won't attack me. So sometimes we find ways to make the attack stop that actually make the battle worse and weaken us on the inside after the fact. This is the root of addiction. Oh, I was praying for our kids when y'all were standing up earlier. I was praying, God, don't let them make an alliance with something early in their life. Don't let them make an agreement with something. Some of us make agreements with things that provide us with temporary relief, but they are false gods. They cannot save. They do not serve us. They do not satisfy us. They are broken cisterns that cannot hold water. 
So if we're going to preach about anything, if we're going to preach about repentance from sin and dead works, we have to first understand that before the pro- oh, this is my sermon. Before the promise of God can be received, your agreement with the enemy has to be broken. And there are things there are things about you that are not true, that are not right. That are not noble, that are not good report, that are not virtuous, that are not praiseworthy, that you have begun to believe because sometimes it is easier to believe the lie that looks like the evidence I can see than believe the truth that is new. And it's easier for me to bring God my love handles and ask him to suck them out. Have you ever crawled up in the presence of God when it's so bad that you can't even hardly pray anymore? After you've been 15 rounds with, oh God, just, just me. Oh man. And, and I've had God help me in those times. To be honest with you, I wouldn't be here if He didn't help me in those times. So there's nothing wrong with that. But I heard the Lord say to me the other day, this would have been easier if you'd have brought it to me earlier. Listen, it starts before you see it. Say that out loud. It starts before you see it. Again, it starts before you see it. That's true for a leak in your roof. That is true for an, an emotional state. I was so, I was so obsessed with, with Paul's uh, instruction to the Philippians. He said, he said the, the peace of God will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Look at this in verse 7. And the peace of God. So I want the peace of God. God, give me your peace. I'm so stressed out. I'm so anxious. I don't know what to do about it. And he said, Well, if you don't guide your mind, it's impossible. For God's peace to guard your heart. How many know your mind needs to be guided? Oh, let me. Oh, I need to break it to you. Your mind needs guidance. Your mind is an undisciplined, rabid dog that will bite the whole neighborhood. I'm t- your mind needs guidance. That powerful computer of your mind. That mind needs guidance. Elon Musk didn't make a self-driving mind yet, y'all. I don't think there's one coming on the market. So if I'm going to bring God into my problems but not bring him into my process, watch what's going to happen every single time. When the king said to the enemy, Benadad, I can't meet these demands. The Lord gave a promise in verse 13. Listen to this. This is 1 Kings 20, 13. A prophet came to Ahab, king of Israel, and announced, this is what the Lord says. Woo! This is what the Lord says. I'm supposed to read what comes next, but that's where I'm stuck. This is what the Lord says. Everybody say it. This is what the Lord says. What did I come to church to hear? What the Lord says. What do I want to fill my heart with? What the Lord says. What do I want my kids to believe? What the Lord says. What am I building my life on that can't be shaken with a storm? What the Lord says. What has the power to defeat and uproot every lie I believe? What the Lord says. What am I steering my life according to? What the Lord says. What has the final say over what happens to me in this season of my life? What the Lord says. What has divine power to demolish strongholds and defeat every devil in hell? What the Lord says. This is what the Lord says. I heard what you said, Benadad, but this is what the Lord says. Do you see this vast army? Do you see these problems? Do you see this situation? This is what the Lord says. I will give it into your hand today. Then you will know I am the Lord. Well, Pastor Steve, 
That doesn't apply to me. I'm divorced. Well, Pastor Steve, that doesn't apply to me. I'm 12. Well, Pastor Steve, that doesn't apply to me. I got a learning disability. Well, Pastor Steve, that doesn't apply to me. I got an eating disorder. Well, Pastor Steve, that doesn't apply to me. I don't have any friends. Well, Pastor Steve, that doesn't apply to me. I got a GED. If God did it for Ahab, he'll sure enough do it for me. I am his child. Do it for me, Lord. Do it for me, Lord. I have been carrying the burdens of battles that my decisions created. I have been anxious about agreements that I made with the enemy. But the Lord said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deliver them into your hands today. Then you will know. Then you will know. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and mind. Wait a minute. What's the difference? Heart and mind. Heart and mind. The heart is the emotions. The mind is the thought process. And I can't pray my way out of emotional states that my thinking caused. Y'all didn't shout too good over that part. Sit down. We're still, we're still just getting started. Um, I'm, not very, um, I'm not very good at vacation. I don't know how you can be bad at vacation, but I am. Usually I'm too lazy to do anything fun with my kids and make any memories. But then sometimes... When I try stuff, it, it just goes horribly wrong. Um, in fact, every time I try to do something a little adventurous, it goes wrong. We, we were talking this summer. Uh, we went to the beach this summer, and, we, and they had kayaks that you could ride in the ocean. But it's different. When Holly gets in the kayak, it's peaceful. When I get in the, the kayak, it's cursed. And there's three, three times we got in the kayak that it went bad, all in one week, last summer. I didn't get in a kayak this summer because the kayak is cursed when I get in. Um, one of the times at the kayak, it ended with a man with scissors pointing them at me, telling me he was going to stab me with the scissors. And that happened. That happened. And, and we don't have time to talk about that. And I don't really want to talk about it. It's a horrible memory. But even when I'm not in the kayak, listen how bad I am. Listen how bad I am at adventures. We swam in the ocean uh, two summers ago. And I think I told y'all this story where the riptide. Yeah, I told y'all that. But it's a conversation that I had with Elijah that I wanted to say to you. And maybe I'll say more about this at YouthX because they're gonna let me preach a session too, and I might talk more about this. I said, Elijah, you've got to be so careful how far you swim out from me, because even if I want to get to you out there. There is a place that you can get so far away from me. I'm your dad. I'm your father. If I could get to you, I'll get to you. But in this particular instance, the undertow was so bad, I had Abby on one arm, and Graham was hanging on the other. And I, They weren't care if I lived or died. They were just using me to get out as an object. And I said, if you get too far out, it won't be about whether I want to come get you. There is such a thing, and I used it to parallel to him, not just the water, but I just talked about in, in, in your teenage years, in your decisions, there is a place where you can get far enough out. Now, I'm not saying God's love can't reach you wherever you are, especially for y'all in the back. How y'all doing? I'm not saying you're too far away for the Lord. But, but what I'm saying is, you can't make an agreement with the enemy in your soul 
and then ask for peace in your life. If you do, it's, it's going to be cyclical, and you're just going to keep bringing your problems to God over and over again, and he'll accept them. But the Lord has been asking me, do you always want to be bringing me your problems, or do you want to bring me your thoughts before they become problems? So I, I think we have to decide. Will we be willing to let God guide our minds so that his peace can guard our hearts? And The term is a military term. It's a, it's a great, amazing picture that Paul gives. It's a military term. It's talking about a detachment that God will set up at your heart, the peace of God. There are two things mentioned in Philippians chapter 4. You may not notice them on the surface, but they're both right there. One is the peace of God, and one is the God of peace. In Philippians 4 7, it says, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding. And every time I call someone who's going through something that you can't imagine or can't figure out how to deal with or you can't counsel, the standard thing that I will pray for them is, God, and I pray that your peace that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind. Because you know, when you're calling someone who lost their child as a pastor, or when you're calling somebody who is in the fight of their life and dealing with things that that you know, they didn't cause for themselves, it's no good for you to try to explain it to them. So I'll just pray that the peace of God that passes all understanding would guard their heart and their mind in Christ. But some of the agreements that you make with the enemy, instead of keeping out anxiety, the peace of God wants to keep out anxiety, but sometimes your agreements with the enemy keep out the peace of God. You know, when I tell myself I'm not worthy, in psychological terms, they talk about rumination. And a lot of us, we think that we're overthinking things, we're really underthinking things. We're just thinking the same thing over and over at the same level, never involve God, just give the enemy whatever he wants, just give him our mind, just believe anything that goes through our mind. Right? But the peace of God will set up a guard at your heart, that's your emotions. If you guide your mind. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.